Welcome to Nguyen Nam Podcast Channel. What kind of dog would prompt an acclaimed food critic and writer to open one of his last bottles of very expensive French wine? If the critic is Jim Harrison, the answer is simple, an English setter. Although today's field-trained English setter is accustomed to the sound of gunfire, the breed originated in the 14th century, long before firearms existed. According to the English Setter Association of America ESAA, the dogs of that period would help their hunter masters by crouching down on their front legs to indicate the presence of birds. This is how the setter was bred to lay down silently, or set. The dog's posture would prompt the hunter to spread their net over a wide area, including over the dog, make a loud noise to flush the birds, then reap the harvest of fowl caught in the net. A standing dog on point would be much more readily tangled in the net. Therefore, this low-lying method was ideal for net hunting. Early authorities say the breed developed before the pointer. The English setter was bred from crossings of the Spanish pointer and the Springer Spaniel, according to evidence in sportsmen's writings. English setters might not be thousands of years old, as some breeds are, but they certainly have a long and distinguished history. Setters are discussed in the first extensive book on British dogs, De Cannabis Britannicis in 1570, translated in 1576 as The Dogs of Britain by Dr. John Caius, physician to King Edward VI and Queens Mary I and Elizabeth. The doctor's description is so appropriate that we still recognize it today in English setters. You can picture the dog silently stepping forward, scenting the bird, always biddable. They creep forward and freeze into the point with a paw lifted to mark the spot. Some dogs today still crouch toward the ground in the old way, which was useful with nets. Other dogs are more upright, a position that became popular after firearms became common. In either case, the English setter at work in the field is a beautiful sight and the breed's birthright. The Dogs of Laverack and Llewellyn the modern English setter is the result of the efforts of two 19th-century residents of the United Kingdom, Edward Laverack and Richard Purcell Lulin. In 1825, Laverack obtained Ponto and Old Mall, products of a 35-year-old English setter line. Laverack's breeding initiatives produced a gentle dog who was a fine companion and show animal but who did not always perform well in field trials. To correct this perceived deficiency, Lulin crossed Laverack's English setter with other breeds. Today, the Lulin Setter is considered to be the field-bred English Setter, while Laverack's dog is the foundation for the breed's show dogs of today. These dogs are generally larger and carry more coat than their canine colleagues in the field. Once the breed was exported to America in the 19th century, C.N. Myers of Blue Bar Kennels in Pennsylvania played a major role in the development of the English Setter in the States. In fact, the English Setter was one of the nine original charter breeds to be recognized by the AKC in 1878.